for so long, I've wanted for so long to be successful. And now all of a sudden, because I'm a woman, I feel bad for it. I feel guilty for being successful. Like that sucks. It sucks that like women have to feel that way. But it does, it happens all the time when women start all of a sudden. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm Huda Katan and today I'm unfiltered. I'm gonna be removing all of my makeup and answering some questions. I would describe myself as she-o warrior, a mother. I'm also a lover. I am a really, really loving person. I don't love always, but when I do, it's so deep. My signature style is kind of classic. I feel like I'm kind of a classic person. When I fell in love with makeup, gosh, I was really, really young. I felt like I was not a cute kid. I fell in love with the way makeup could transform people. Like you could be just a basic human being and then all of a sudden look like a doll and like this like beautiful creature. I was born in Oklahoma City. Um, my parents had me and then they had my sister. And when I was two and she was six months old, um, we moved to Tennessee. I consider myself Southern. It's the longest place I've ever lived in my entire life. And uh, it was interesting growing up there because uh, I was, you know, one of the only brown people in my whole entire school. My parents immigrated from Iraq to the States. Iraq was always in war. I wasn't in touch with my culture um, and my heritage, and I felt like because of that, I maybe was like a little bit confused about who I was as a child. Um, I remember definitely not feeling pretty um, because I didn't look like everyone else. And, and I remember some kids specifically went out of their way sometimes to make you feel like you knew you didn't belong, and that was really tough. Some people would accidentally say my name, like a teacher would be like, Huda, and everybody would be like, who is Huda? And, um, you know, I chose to go by Heidi at a very young age just because I felt like I wanted to blend in so badly. And um, I got so embarrassed every time somebody would accidentally say my name. I definitely felt like I wasn't good enough, so the makeup felt like, you know, made you prettier, made you feel more beautiful. Sometimes I just felt like the things around me just were maybe, like, misunderstanding me. I don't know. My makeup is coming off faster than we planned. <laughs> I mean, I still struggle with all these issues to date. Like I was just, you know, I started realizing I've had a lot of issues with self-love and I didn't realize it because I always felt like I wasn't good enough. Sorry. You know, I actually waitressed for a little while when I was in high school and I loved doing it. And in the Middle East, it's not necessarily prestigious if you serve people and I loved it. My parents struggled with that a little bit. And I felt like when I wanted to study makeup, they were like, I feel like the women in my life were maybe like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so amazing. You're so good at it, you love it. But the guys in my life were not really supportive. Some of them were like, oh my God, is this another hobby that you're just gonna go through? After I graduated, I studied finance, did all the things I was supposed to, got a job I was supposed to, and then, you know, was told like I shouldn't be there. I was like, I need to find something that I'm going to be passionate about. And, uh, and that's when I was like, well, what could I do for free? What would I pay money to do? Like, you know, and, and makeup was definitely that thing where I would literally, I, still to this day, I would pay money to do my job. It's your chance to fly. I struggled a lot as a businesswoman in the Middle East. When I had first started, um, you know, no influencers had really been able to churn the page and actually compete against big brands. You know, people treat you like it's a hobby, you know, and I remember, I remember that feeling of like people just looking at you and being like, you know, like, when are you going to get out of this? And, and like, just hand it over to me. Let me take care of this for you because you're just a, a girl that doesn't know what they're doing. And, and I was very protective over our brand. I felt like I didn't really feel like as a person and as a brand I was taken seriously for the longest time. I definitely think when I first started, it was really challenging because we were starting our beauty brand from the Middle East and it wasn't common to do that. And it was almost like we were pioneering. And I remember saying to my husband so many times, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. There is not a blueprint for me to follow, but I've always trusted my intuition when I've made decisions. And I do feel that any time I've ever made the wrong decision, it's because I allowed somebody to interfere and override my intuition. Sometimes you really need to trust your gut. 
my husband. Well, I've known him forever. I had a crush on him. <laughs> and then I met him on my 16th birthday, actually. I was walking home from school and somebody yelled, hey, Huda, happy birthday. I started dating almost 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, we've been together since. The goal is to make us the number one beauty brand in the world. What's crazy is it's with my family. Everyone is involved in the business, from my husband to my daughter. Mom is not involved in the business. She's the only person who's not. She's probably the smartest one out of everyone not to get involved. Like a fire, burn it down. I definitely think being in the beauty industry, a lot of people think it's like, you know, it's superficial, it's for one thing, and it's not. Like, I am a person in the beauty industry who doesn't believe that the beauty industry is shallow or vain or one-dimensional. I think it is so deep and it's still not, I think, reached its full potential. I think beauty is, it's an emotion, it's empowering. I've definitely challenged norms, I've challenged everyone we worked with, from manufacturers to, um, you know, influencers. I don't know if I see what's going on on the outside. It's so funny, my husband says this to me all the time. He's like, you know, you're not the little guy anymore, but I don't see myself as anything else. I see myself as this person who's struggling to make a difference. Because everybody does self-sabotage, I didn't realize it. Even when you think you're not doing it, you're doing it. My self-sabotage was when things were going really well, I was like, oh, something bad is gonna happen because it can't, everything can't be so good. Like, I don't wanna be like on a self-help you know, trip, but I do think that we were all meant to be a certain type of happy, but we've had these like certain issues happen that told us otherwise. I'm such a hardcore feminist, and I really struggled with what that means. What does it mean to be a feminist? I've worked for so long, I've wanted for so long to be successful, and now all of a sudden, because I'm a woman, I feel bad for it. I feel guilty for being successful. Like, that sucks. It sucks that like women have to feel that way. But it does, it happens all the time when women start all of a sudden, But like when women when women want to do something amazing, they all of a sudden feel like like all of a sudden they have to become really masculine or they have to become really alpha or they have to do something, you know, and it's not right. Like it's as if we're not meant for it. For the longest time I just felt like I had to be like really, really harsh to be taken seriously as a CEO. And um, and I felt like when I understood that women could be both sides of it, it was really beautiful. And don't get me wrong, I can be an alpha female in a boardroom, but I also want to be loving and nurturing with my daughter as well. Like I want to remain that sexy, that part of, of being a woman as well. I finally have learned that I could be all of those things. And that's awesome. That's what a woman should, and a man should also be able to be all of those things as well. You know, it took me some time to get there, but I'm like, it feels really, really good to understand that. Oh my God, look at all this hair, guys. <laughs> Do you see all this hair? <laughs> Yeah. It's funny because I feel like I do do a lot of self work and I don't think I, I probably talk about that on the show. When do I feel most beautiful? I feel really, really beautiful. I know this is going to sound really lame. I, I feel really, really beautiful when I'm with Noor. I love being her mom. It's really, really cool. I don't only feel beautiful, I feel perfect. And I love that feels really, really good. Aw, thank you. <laughs>